it's official. The Atlanta Braves just cannot have nice things this year. They get a series win, but they potentially lose Austin Riley. We'll talk about all that on today's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I'm your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Follow the podcast on social media as well at Lockdown underscore Braves. You're new and watching on YouTube. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you already have, hit that thumbs up button so others can find us here at Lockdown Braves. Leave me a comment as well as it does help out the show a ton when you do that. The other thing you can do to help out the show, if you're listening on the audio version, leave me a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. I do appreciate all your support. All those who make Lockdown Braves their first listen of each and every day, and all my everydayers out there who continue to let me know down in the comments section below. Today's podcast, we'll talk about that weekend series against the Angels. They do get a series win after a frustrating loss on Friday, but they also potentially lose Austin Riley. We'll talk about that as much as we can. Obviously, we're waiting for further results. We don't know the whole story at the moment, but does not look good for the Braves' third baseman. Before we get into all that, though, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, let's talk about the highlights of the weekend as we normally do on Monday. Obviously, we'll get into Miners Monday here in a second as well. Frustrating 3-2 to two loss on Friday. Again, the Braves absolutely should have won. They had almost twice as many base runners as the Angels and just could not find that big hit. They get a blowout win on Saturday, and then they get a 3-1 to one win on Sunday that was closer than it should have been. So while I, I'm trying to be optimistic, I want to be. It was a series win. I, I'm, I'm looking for more from this team. I, I just I am. That should have been a sweep, and I feel like they left a couple of games that they should have won. Uh, on this road trip. It's a six and four road trip. That is great. Nothing easy about a 10 game West coast trip and they go six and four. So that's certainly, you know, is fine. I'll take it, but you blew the one in Colorado. And like I said, that Friday night game against the angels is one that you just, you have to have, you have to win those game and you go eight and two. That's the stretch I've been looking for. That's what I've been asking for. Give me an eight and two stretch from this team. And look, Again, I get it difficult, hard to do it on the road, but there were there were two games there that you pretty pretty much should have won, easily could have won, and you didn't. And you just can't leave those games on the table this time of year when you are battling for a postseason spot. Let's forget the division. We'll, we'll briefly touch on it later with the Philly series coming up, but you are just trying to hang on to a postseason spot at this point. You can't be leaving these games on the table, games that you should absolutely win but getting that all out of the way obviously we're all waiting anxiously on the results of austin riley's upcoming mri that he's going to have i'm assuming in atlanta on monday if he didn't already fly back after the game on sunday and have it sunday night but we most likely will get an update on that sometime monday if we do get major news there i'll come in with a, a short on youtube with kind of my reaction to that the initial x-rays and CT scan were both inconclusive on his right hand. Uh, look, I'm not a doctor in any way, shape, or form, but typically when these things happen, if it's nothing major, they'll come back and say the x-rays were negative, but maybe we'll, we're still going to get some testing done. And we've seen that in the past where it comes back and everything looks clean on initial testing, and then you go have the MRI done and it picked up something you didn't see. But when they're already saying the tests were inconclusive, to me that's saying, hey, we think there's something here. Let's have an MRI to confirm it and see potentially how bad it is. Again, I'm just, I'm not a doctor at all, but just kind of trying to read in between the lines and also just reading Austin Riley's reaction. He was in serious pain. Uh, we don't see that a lot from Austin Riley, but he was in pain. He ran the bases, but couldn't take the field after that. So you know he was hurting. And just with the way this season has gone, many Braves fans, Probably feeling pretty pessimistic about it at this moment, thinking that Austin Riley could be out for a significant chunk of time. And if that's the case, uh, I don't know what to say about this season. I mean, just how much how much can one team take? 
And I said this coming into the year, and I'm regretting saying it now. I said there's no way this team doesn't make the postseason unless they just lose a ton of players to entry. I should have knocked on some wood or something after I said that because I never could have imagined. And again, we're we're speaking prematurely here on on Austin Riley. We're hoping everything is going to be okay. But either way, you have lost significant pieces to your lineup this year. And I just don't know how you overcome that. If this is something serious, they'd cost Austin Riley most of the rest of the season, if not the rest of the season. Where do you go from here? I mean, it's just there is no replacing in Austin Riley. And again, I hate to get too far ahead of ourselves here. I have more to talk about from over the weekend. But again, myself, I'm sure like you, you're sitting there or you're listening to this Monday morning thinking, how bad is it going to be and how much worse can it get? for this Braves team with this season. I mean, this road trip was rough. You had Jorge Soler pull a hamstring, and he's missed some time. They're hopeful he'll be back Tuesday. You get Austin Riley get hit by a pitch. Who knows how long he'll be out. Travis Darno had a big scare. He got hit in the hand. Max Fried is sitting on the bench in the dugout and gets hit by an errant throw. I mean, this Braves team in 2024 <laughs> feels absolutely cursed. It just really does. And I know fans don't want to hear about excuses but I, I don't know what else you can do what else you can say about just the number of not just injuries impact injuries you're talking ronald you're talking ozzy you're talking michael you're talking riley sean murphy even you know first day of the year and i've said it multiple times i thought he was going to have a big season this year coming into it i was very excited for sean murphy it's essentially misses half the season it's just it's it's been a frustrating season injury wise. And again, if if Riley is out for if you're out at this point, if you're out for an extended period, you're pretty much out for the year. If that's the case, you know, and something's fractured in there, again, it's just a throw your hands up in the air situation. I, I don't know, I don't know how much more this team can take. But trying to move all that aside, let's talk about what we did see from the weekend. This offense, plenty of base runners, 47 total base runners in a three-game series. That's a total of walks. Hits and hit batters. Too many hit batters in this series. Wash, get your team together over there. Stop hitting our guys. Braves ended up hitting two of their guys. I don't think it was intentional, but, uh, man, stop hitting our guys, Wash. Um, but they had plenty of base runners, plenty of opportunities, and just outside of Saturday, could not get those big hits. Friday and Sunday, I mean, those should have been blowouts as well in the Braves' favor, and they just could not get those hits. Big reason for that. They keep crowning into double plays seven times over a three-game series. They grounded into a double play. <laughs> I mean, just it, it seems like it happens every time a runner is on first base. And over the last 30 days now, the Braves have grounded into 36 double plays. That is the most in baseball by 11. The Astros have the second most over that span with 25. We've talked about it a lot. This Braves lineup especially at the top now, it is station to station. I mean, you're looking at Soler, who was up there. Obviously, Michael Harris back does bring you some speed to the top of the order. But then you're looking at a Riley, and who knows? Maybe maybe he'll be replaced by some speed. And Riley can run. He doesn't steal bases. But then you got Ozuna, you got Olsen, you got the catcher spot. There's just not a lot of speed at the top of this order. It doesn't give you many options to do some things, to, to hit, have some hit and run opportunities, to have some stolen base opportunities. And because of that, and you faced a guy with a really good two-seamer in Soriano. You faced a guy with a really good sinker on Sunday and a guy whose name I'm sorry I cannot say and won't try to. So you did face some some really good ground ball pitchers that had some really good sinkers, but still, this is a 30-day stretch now. You have more double plays, 11 more double plays, than the second most team in baseball over that stretch. It's just it's too much. Too many double plays they've been hitting into here lately that is costing them opportunities to score runs. you got to figure out how to – how to move guys around, how to get some action on the base pass to avoid some of these double plays, especially when you're facing these ground ball pitchers. Ozuna, we talked about the other day. I know somebody on the Mailbag podcast said he looked a little lost, and I saw that too. He did. He seemed to be swinging and missing a lot more. Well, he turned that around quickly, and that's been the thing with Ozuna this year. There's been, I think, two times now where he's kind of looked a little lost at the plate, and it lasted maybe a three- or four-game stretch, and then he picked things right back up. He had eight hits on the weekend. Now, R.C., it does seem to be – cooling off, getting a little too pull happy. You can see it. There was a pitch on – there was twice in this weekend series. I know specifically 
where there's a pitch down and away, and that front foot is stepping out towards the third base dugout, and he's either missing that pitch away or, as he did on Sunday, it was just an easy ground out. So he needs to start taking that opposite field approach a little bit more. Loriano getting more playing time and taking advantage, had home runs in back-to-back games over the weekend. Good to see that. He's been really good since putting on a Braves uniform, so he should get the majority of playing time. Now it will be interesting when Solaire is back. What happens there? Does he take over full time for Kelnick in left field, or does it become a platoon situation? At that point, he becomes a short side platoon unless the Braves are going to face four lefties a week like they did this past week, which is unusual. But either way, Loriano, I think you just got to ride that hot bat. Snicker hit him fifth on Sunday, and that's the right call. You get a hot bat, just play it and put him up in the lineup. Now the pitching over the weekend and over the last week in general was outstanding. You had that that bad week, obviously, where they lost all those games. But the pitching was back on track in that San Francisco and Angels series. Now, not facing the best offenses in the world, but still, they looked really good. Schwellenbach was good enough to win on Friday. Struck out eight in five-plus innings, allowed three runs. Sale was outstanding. Gave up a couple of runs in that sixth inning, his last inning out there. Hate to see that as it pushed that ERA a little bit. But uh, And then Morton looked really good. He had four no-hit innings. Uh, on Sunday, and then just kind of ran into some trouble in the fifth inning. First four batters reached in that fifth inning, but he was able to get out of it thanks to a failed squeeze attempt and then a big double play. And so he only allowed one run of that inning, kept the Braves in the lead. But I want to give Brian Snicker some props because a lot of people get on to Brian Snicker for his bullpen management. In that sixth inning on Saturday, even in what was a blowout game at that point, Sale was kind of maybe running out of gas, running his first bit of trouble. And Brian Snicker gets Pierce Johnson up in the bullpen just to shut anything down right there. Any potential comeback, he gets Pierce Johnson up. Because I had somebody ask me, why did he use Pierce Johnson in that situation with such a big lead? Well, because he got him up for that sixth inning in case Chris Sale got into trouble, which is the absolutely smart thing to do. Too many times we see a starter get into trouble and nobody's up in the bullpen and he doesn't have anybody ready to go. But this situation, even in Chris with Chris Sale on the mound, he got somebody up ready to go, and once you get him hot, you might as well bring him in. And then on Sunday, you had Charlie Morton, who was struggling in that fifth inning, and we've seen it at times where things can get away from Charlie Morton quickly. What does Brian Snicker do? He gets Dylan Lee up just in case he needs him to come in in that fifth inning to get out of a jam. Instead, Charlie does, comes back out the next inning, gets one out, and then you go to Dylan Lee and let him give you some length as well. So I thought it was a great job of managing that bullpen. This is go time now for Brian Snicker, so you're going to see him be a little bit more aggressive with that bullpen than you may see him over the first four months of the season, and those are just a couple of examples there. And then lastly, I want to get into the defense. Watching Michael Harris glide in center field once again, I mean, there were a couple of balls that I thought were definite doubles in the gap, and Michael Harris was just right there. So that was fun to watch. An incredible play by Austin Riley to get – Uh, Joe Adele, who was already rounding first base because he thought it was down the line. He didn't realize that Austin Riley caught it. That is great. Uh, Just an incredible play from Riley, who should win the gold glove. Hopefully, if he is injured and out for the rest of the season, that doesn't cost him what should be his first gold glove. But it's been an amazing season for him defensively. And then a great double play turned by the Angels. Matt Olson with a smart swing. He's trying to push the ball through that left side with the bases loaded one out and just an incredible diving play to turn a double play there to take away a couple of RBIs from Matt Olson. So some good defense. Angels made a couple of other really good defensive plays on the weekend as well. So again, it's a series win. It's back-to-back series wins. But in both of those series, you potentially lose Jorge Soler, who again, we're hoping is back, and you potentially lose Austin Riley for a while. It's just the Braves can't have anything nice, anything go their way this year. It's just the way that this season has gone. Next, we'll turn our attention to the minor league level, talk about the top prospects from the Braves system, how they performed this last week, some really good pitching performances. Waldrop with a really good but really odd start. J.R. Ritchie looked good as well. Drew Hackenberg continues to impress at AA. We'll talk more about those guys here next. Price Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps on Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And right now, you can win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. And it's just that simple. 
you can just open up that prize pick app. Use our promo code locked on MLB. You're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. They got tabs across the top for MLB. I don't even know what some of these sports are. They got anything on there that you can imagine. Tennis, NFL uh, starting up soon, as well as college football. And they got for, for baseball, you got pitcher strikeouts, first inning runs, total bases, hitter fantasy score, pitcher fantasy score, walks, runs, hits, runs, RBIs combined, anything that you want to choose from right there in your prize picks app. So download the prize picks app, use that promo code locked on MLB. You get a first deposit match up to $100. That's code locked on MLB on prize picks for your first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Thank you for making Locked On Braves your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast where host host Paul Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, brings you hum- humor along with the biggest stories of the day. You can check that out on YouTube or uh, on or on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And Sully is much more cleaner with those reads than I am and very funny, so make sure you check him out at Locked On MLB. Let's get in to our Miners Monday segment here. We'll start with the top prospects. A.J. smith Shaver went just one inning uh, due to rain. With no hits, no walks, no earned two strikeouts. That looks like a really good line for a reliever. We'll see if that happens down the stretch for A.J. smith Shaver. Now, Hurston Waldrop, five no-hit innings, five strikeouts, no runs allowed. That is great. Six walks. That is highly concerning. Twelve walks in his last three starts, 11 and two-thirds innings pitched. That is... That's a step backward for for Hurston Waldrop. Um, again, I'm not I'm not going to get too concerned about it, uh, but that is a lot of walks for Hurston Waldrop. Something you were hoping he was going to do a good job of cleaning up this year hasn't necessarily been the case. And J.R. Ritchie looking really good coming back from Tommy John surgery. That velocity on the fastball not quite where it was pre surgery, but five innings, five hits, no walks. Did hit a couple of batters. Uh, but just one earned run allowed and eight strikeouts. He has 22 strikeouts in his last three starts. That's 22 strikeouts in his last 14 and uh, two-thirds innings. Nacho Alvarez only played in one game this past week, so I'm assuming that there's some kind of injury there. He did have a hit and a couple of walks in that game. Uh, Luis Guanipa, three for 21, a double, three walks, and a stolen base at Augusta this past week. In 22 games at Augusta now, he's slashing just 165, 228, 188 with seven walks, to 22 strikeouts and four stolen bases with three caught stealing. Two extra base hits, both of them doubles. Look, he is just 18, turns 19 in December. Not going to be too hard on the kid. I was hoping for a little bit more, though. Some guy that I was really excited about, and a guy that looks really good when I watch him, but he seems to be still struggling a little bit to his first, you know, it's not even full season, but his first taste of full season baseball there at Augusta. But again, very young kid, very talented but it has been a bit of a struggle for him so far. A guy that's not struggling with his news promotion is Drew Hackenberg. Six innings, three hits, one walk. He also hit two batters. I don't know what's up with the hit batters this week, Uh, but no earned runs and six strikeouts and eight starts at Mississippi now. It's a 3.51 ERA, a 1.24 whip, 233 batting average against 57 strikeouts and 16 walks and 51 innings pitch. And really, the damage he has gotten is coming a couple of really bad starts. I know one start he got blown up, but for the most part, he's been really good since joining Mississippi. And speaking of somebody else, it may be the best bat in the system right now, and that is Drake Baldwin. 10 for 21 this past week, a double, a homer, 14 runs batted in, and three walks in 46 games at AAA now for Drake Baldwin. He's slashing 311, 429, 921. That's eight doubles, eight home runs, 38 walks, and 30. Three strikeouts. I might have to double check that slugging percentage. That cannot be uh, correct. But either way, Drake Baldwin has been really, really good since joining Gwinnett, and it's just really incredible to see what he's done. Again, I've I've said I've I've said I don't love the swing for me, but again, I can I can love I cannot love a swing and a guy be really good. And that slugging percentage was off. It's a 492 slugging percentage, a 921 OPS in Gwinnett. So I want to just verify that really quickly. Uh, down at Gwinnett, Alejo Lopez, 13 for 24 this past week. Three three doubles, two triples, and four walks. He had a five-hit game. Chadwick Trump, 10 for 17 with two doubles and two walks. And Yuli Gurriel, 8 for 15, a double home run, three walks, and one stolen base. The 40-year-old has done really good at Gwinnett this year. He's in 72 games, slashing 300, 380. Uh, and sorry, lost my spot there. 498, 18 doubles, 12 home runs, 36 walks to 46 strikeouts, and 11 
stolen bases for the 40 year old and why this might be important. Could he be somebody that could replace Austin Riley if he does have to miss some time? Obviously a lot of experience. He has time at third base could hold it down. And again, he's been really good at triple a this season. Um, He's been playing mostly first base, second base, and DH. But, uh, again, could be a possibility, and he's had a really good season at Gwinnett. Again, hopefully that's not the case. Uh, hopefully Austin Riley will be back soon, but that could be a potential replacement there. Uh, Ian Anderson, six innings, three hits, two walks, no earned, seven strikeouts. His last three starts, 17 and two-thirds innings, just 11 hits allowed. Does have eight walks. That's always been an issue for Ian Anderson. Five earned runs and 15 strikeouts. Got to think that the next time there's an opening, in the rotation, we're going to see Ian Anderson get a chance. Don't know when that will be, uh, but I do think we'll see Ian Anderson get an opportunity at some point before the end of the year. And Jackson Stevens, three innings, no hits, two walks, no earned, and seven strikeouts for Jackson Stevens. And then Bryce Selder, six innings, five hits, two walks, only one earned, and five strikeouts. Ed Gwinnett, Cal Conley was having a good second half, seven for 22 at the plate, a double, four walks, and three stolen bases. Ethan working your seven for 22, a double, a homer, three walks, and a stolen base. Darius Vines made two starts this past week, 11 innings, seven hits, four walks, one earned, 17 strikeouts and in 11 innings for Darius Vines, who's back down at double A now. Uh, Trey Riley, two innings, no hits, and four walks out of the bullpen. David Fletcher, five innings, two hits, two walks, did hit a batter uh, and two strikeouts as he continues to dazzle with that knuckleball every now and then. And Jan Carlos Lara making his first double A start did not go as hoped. Only one hit allowed in two and a third innings, eight walks. Uh, three earned runs and two strikeouts, so not a great double-A debut for Giancarlo Slara, who had been throwing the ball really well at Rome before his promotion. Down at Rome, Drew Compton, seven for 21, two doubles and two walks. Kevin Kilpatrick had a rough second half, so good to see him have a good week. He went seven for 19 with two doubles, four walks, and five stolen bases. EJ Exposito, six for 19, a double, four walks, and three stolen bases. And then on the mound at Rome, Blake Burkhalter, five innings, five hits, a walk, three earned, seven strikeouts. And Ryan Barraza. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I don't think I've said this name at all this year, but he's having a good season. This past week, it was three innings, no hits, no walks, no earns, six strikeouts with two saves. On the year, Barossa is a 2.93 ERA, a 0.98 whip, and 27 and two-thirds innings with 45 strikeouts. 24-year-old reliever there might be one to keep an eye on. And then Riley Frey and Corey Wall each had nice starts at Rome as well. And then finally down at Augusta, John Gill, had cooled off a little bit since joining Augusta, but eight for 20 this past week with three doubles, five walks, two stolen bases. Again, he's a bat you really need to keep an eye on in the organization. Patrick Klawizi, one of my favorite bats from this past draft, four for 16 with a double, four walks, and two stolen bases. Garrett ba Ballman, five and two-thirds innings, only two hits allowed, two walks, gave up one earned run on a solo home run and 10 strikeouts. And a young kid out of high school the Braves drafted last year, a 2.19 walk per nine, this year, that's very impressive for a young pitcher. And now he's starting to rack up the strikeouts. He has 28 strikeouts in his last 18 in a third inning. So, again, a very promising young arm in this brave system that not many people are talking about. Uh, but he's had it put together as quietly a pretty solid year. And then Jacob Schaefer, three and two-thirds innings, one hit, one walk, no earn, and six strikeouts. 17th round draft pick from this past draft off to a good start to his professional career. So that's everything happening down on the farm. A lot of good to talk about. There certainly on the pitching side, but good to see some hitters as well. Drake Baldwin and they're having a good week, um, but we'll see what happens. I think the Yuli Gurriel thing could be interesting depending on which way the Braves go and what the news is on Austin Riley that we're all waiting for on Monday. Next, we'll come back, talk about some more injury news. Riley, Soler, Ronaldo Lopez, Acuna was there over the weekend. Talk about some of the things that he said. We'll get into all of that here next. I love sports, and I love them so much that I never want them to stop. And luckily, I'm a baseball fan, so it doesn't for me during the summertime where you got baseball on every day, and FanDuel has something for you every day. They have a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. But, hey, football season is right around the corner. If you're looking forward to that, you got college football starting up this weekend. I believe you got a couple of games in week zero, they call it and then the NFL right around the corner. So you can head on over to FanDuel.com to start making the most out of your summer. They got daily props there as well for Major League Baseball, as well as award winners where they have Chris Sale as the favorite in the NL Cy Young 
race as well as division predictions, all that world series predictions. You can check all that over at fanduel.com. Also make sure you visit fanduel.com slash play safe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way that you play FanDuel, official sports betting partner of major league baseball. Talked a lot about Austin Riley and for good reason, we're all waiting in anticipation of the results on Monday. It is an off day on Monday, so we'll see what time we actually get that news, but, Again, hoping for the best, expecting the worst with that. Did not look good, but again, I'll update you once we have that more information there. Jorge Soler, they are hoping that he's going to be back on Tuesday to start that series against the Philadelphia Phillies. Certainly hope that's the case, especially if you're going to be losing Austin Riley. be great to get a bat back in there who was heating up for the Atlanta Braves. But the only problem with that with Jorge Soler is he's having to play the outfield now, and you got a hamstring is- issue you don't want to rush that and put him back out there. You know, again, not not to kind of go down this, this road again, but it's an issue of you get somebody who should be a DH only, and now you're forcing him to play the outfield that he hasn't done a lot of, and it's putting some stress on those legs. So, again, I, I done the fit did not make sense when it happened for the trade. I get it, and, and the bat does make some sense, but you know, having to play him in the outfield now, and he's got a hamstring issue. It just it doesn't doesn't feel good for Jorge Soler, but hopefully he is back in the lineup on Tuesday. Renato Lopez is set to make his return on Tuesday through 71 pitches in his rehab start at Gwinnett, so I can't imagine he's going to throw more than 80, 85 on Tuesday. Hopefully that's enough for him to get through five innings against that Phillies lineup, but looking forward to having him back in the rotation. Acuna and Ozzy Albies were there in Anaheim over the weekend with the team, so that was great to see, you know, Get those two back, and then you got a reunion with Ron Washington and Eric Young as well. So it was a bit of a reunion for many different reasons this past weekend. Uh, But one thing Acuna said that I wanted to note is that he said he won't – essentially said he won't push it this time coming back. Said in 2022 he was so desperate to get back on the field that he played sometimes where he was feeling tired, feeling sore, maybe shouldn't have just because he wanted to get back. This time he said he's going to take his time with it, make sure that he's 100% for the team when he gets out there. So – Again, we'll see what that means for this upcoming season. Will he be ready on opening day? Will they slow play it and maybe bring him back uh, later on? Remember that 2022, he came back, I believe, late April. Many of you were expecting him to come back in May. He came back even sooner than that. So we'll see what the case will be for Acuna, and we'll see does he will he need some update. A lot that we'll see. Uh, but I thought that was interesting to hear from Ron Acuna Jr. just talking about the difference between this time and last time and maybe not being so aggressive and pushing it to come back, wanting to make sure that he can be, you know, that MVP type of player when he does return. I wanted to mention this. I don't know if some of you saw it going around on social media. MLB underscore simulator on X put out some data that basically tells us all what our eyes are seeing and that the Braves have been the unluckiest team in baseball this year and use some data to take some uh, contact, batted ball information, just to show which teams have been the luckiest, which teams have been the unluckiest. And look, I'm not going to lie. I did not read too much into the data. My eyes have told me all that I need to, but if you needed any more proof of it's not just an excuse, the Atlanta Braves have been extremely unlucky this year. And I think part of that's due to that at the beginning of the season, the baseballs were just dead and not caring. And when the Braves lineup was somewhat healthy at the beginning of the year, they were getting hurt by that a lot with baseballs, not traveling as far as we've seen in the past. And again, that's not conspiracy theory. There is data there to back that up. Now I just think it's mostly due to injuries and you've, you know, had guys in the lineup that you've had to count on that you shouldn't have. And Adam Duvall and Eddie Rosario and others not picking on them, but you've had to use a lot of replacement players. And that's been part of the reason as well. But again, if you just needed further, further reason to believe that this season, not just with injuries, but also with what's happened on the field has been one of the, worst most extremely unlucky seasons that we've ever seen there's some more data for you so again that's mlb underscore simulator on x you want to go out and check check out some of that data all right now next up for the atlanta braves got an off day on monday which is good coming off that 10-day road trip but then they got three against the phillies and three against the nats hopefully this homestand goes a lot better than the last one in my mind the braves have missed their chance at the division you had that long uh, losing streak that they had a couple of weeks ago, and then you leave a couple of games on the table on this West Coast trip against some teams that you should beat. Raiders are seven games back in the division. I said that they needed to be under five 
by the time this series rolled around against the Phillies. They did not make that happen. And now it's a situation where you pretty much got to sweep this series at home against the Phillies, and then you got to win the four-game set in Philadelphia to have a chance. And even if you do that, just considering those games, you're only cutting this lead in half that the Phillies currently have. So it, it's I'm not, I'm not going to con- – Completely say that it's over. I am not expecting it. And look at this point with this Braves team. I said, told you on Friday in the mailbag podcast when somebody asked, What should the expectations be for this team? The expectations are get in the postseason. If you do that with all these injuries and all the terrible luck that they've had offensively this year that we just talked about, just get to the postseason. I think it's what the goal for this team should be. Would love for them to go on a great run and win the division, certainly. Uh, but I, I think they just got to focus on staying healthy, playing consistently good baseball, and getting in the postseason. That's got to be the goal at this point. Um, but we'll see what happens in this Phillies series. It is kind of their last chance. But, again, it pretty much has to be a sweep at this point because you have not taken advantage of the Phillies' bad play that they've had in the second half because you've had some bad play of your own. Now the pitching matchups, Lopez versus Wheeler, Freed versus Nola, Schwellenbach versus TBD. Interesting that they didn't – Skip Schwellenbach to get Chris Sale in this series. Not even so much to get Chris Sale in this series because, like I said, I think the division is pretty much done at this point. But just an opportunity to push Schwellenbach back and still keep Chris Sale on regular rest, four days rest. Um, But that doesn't seem to be the case. We've seen the Braves come out with pitching matchups and then change that mid-series. So we'll see if they stick with that plan. But that is the plan for now. All right, that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Thanks for making Locked On Braves your first listen of the day. Again, go make Locked On MLB your second listen. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you're new. Hit that thumbs up button and make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.